Welcome back. Since I'm working on that new workbench, I thought I might as well finally get around to turning me a carver's mallet because I need one from time to time. I've been using a leg off of a bed for a while. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of Texas ebony and I'm going to cut it right here. And I'm going to use this piece. So it'll be largely sapwood, but it'll have some heartwood up at the top. See, it's a lot of heartwood over there. So this will be the top. It's not going to be the whole mallet, but because that would just waste too much of this Texas ebony, and I'm not going to do that. So this will be the head of the mallet. And for the handle, I'm going to take this piece of Bacote right here, and that's what I'm going to make the handle out of. And I'll use a mortise and tenon to hold it in place. It won't be a through mortise and tenon, but it'll be a mortise and tenon, and it'll glue up nice. So let's go. All right, I've got these two pieces roughly milled. This will be the handle. This is going to be the body. It's going to be a roughly three inches uh, wide at the top. Probably, I don't know, two, two and a half at the bottom. And you know, I'll have the handle in. So, yeah, it's a little big, but I don't know where I'm going with it yet shape-wise. So. Let's get at her. I really only need this about this long, and I don't want to waste this much of this stuff, or this Texas ebony. I can use this for something else, so I'm going to take that to the bandsaw real quick. sometimes when the grain runs two directions in the same piece of wood. If I get this to cut clean, this tears out. If I get this to cut clean, this tears out. So, see if I can stiffen these fibers up on this side with some shellac. See what happens. The problem I'm having is that the grain is running at a bias. You can see from this figure the grain direction. What that really means is when you're turning it, regardless of the direction that you're moving the tool or the cut line or the cut direction, one side is always going to be cutting with the grain downhill and you'll have supported fibers. This also means that when the other side comes around and you're cutting, you're now cutting uphill against the grain and the fibers are unsupported. Give that a chance. I, I doused it good, so I'm going to give this a chance to dry and I'll be back. See, the tear out's not so bad there. It got really bad there. Yeah. 
This dual grain direction is really a booger bear. A booger bear. I really hate resorting to this, but 40 grit gouge. And this Texas ebony is hard stuff. Got one little spot right there, and one little spot right there where those go together. I may not be able, well, if I stand here for six hours, I can get it. But I'm getting ready to call this close enough for the girls I run with. Bye, Cracky, that dude it. Almost, but I'm not gonna worry about that. of this earlier. This is called a beating and parting tool. I'm doing a bead. Got this dang exile song stuck in my head. And that's why it's called a beating and parting tool. something about some of that <clears throat> but this is good now mostly this ain't <coughs> crap back to the 40 smooth that back up and go through the grits again I'll be back when I get this sanded now for the stuff dreams are made of Look at that Texas Ebony Pop. Would you look at that? Man, I like this axe. Now the restoring polish, let's see what happens. What's going to be a shame to beat on this, <laughs> but I know it's hard enough, it'll take it. I've still got a few sanding scratches in there, but I don't care. It's for me. If this was something I would sell, I would sell and I would make sure it was perfect because I hate tool marks and sanding scratches. Let's chuck this up. I'm gonna drill a hole in it about that deep and cut me a tenon on here to correspond. Ooh, look. Can you see that, Chatoyans? Let's do it like this. pretty. The reason that I bring my tailstock up to hold it instead of using my hand 
is because I recenter it in here and when I tighten it down, I know it's going to run central. If you do it by hand, I don't care how good you think you are, you'll be off. Not always, but very, very many times. One inch, that'll do. I think I want to go to about right there. About 400 RPM. Look at that pretty stuff. Okay, I'm done with this. For now. So, put the handle between centers and get busy. Look how pretty that Bacote is. The peeling cut. I'm moving my whole body, not my arms. you're not going to have the right kind of control. Mark my depth here. Okay, I mark this for the tenon because this is the straightest grain and I want pretty straight grain in the tenon for strength. And then I will shape the handle. This is almost the right diameter up in here but it needs to come in right in here and I'll probably put a bead too loose but that's just at the beginning so I'll tighten that up a little but it might be just about right for the glue joint sweet charity Perfect. That's going to be pretty.
turn the disc collector on. Billy, why aren't you going to burn any accent lines into that handle? Really? Would you look at that grain? Why would I want to screw that up? That's pretty.
well. Well, it's on there. I had a little hydraulic compression keeping it from going in, but it's in. It's got a good feel to it. I think this will serve me for some time to come. Somebody that saw the pictures of the rough turn pieces said this is too pretty to use. No such thing. So what do you think? I like it. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. My next project isn't really a project of mine per se. Uh, it's going to be a collaboration effort. Uh, Jen at uh, Jen's Woodworking and Things cast a resin bowl, resin and wood, that was giving her a lot of fits, largely because she didn't have the right tools to do it and partly because there's a mixture of side and end grain throughout this thing and it was just kicking her butt. And there are some bubbles in the resin. So she asked me if I'd be willing to, she threw it in the naughty bin and then asked me if I would be willing to uh, give it a look and see if there was anything I could do with it. So that's what we're gonna do next time. I'm going to figure out what I want to do with this, how I want to mount it. She had it on a face plate. I may not. I don't know yet. And I'll see if I can make something out of this without blowing it up. Then I'll send it back to her. Y'all come back.